Hi, I'm Pam McMahon, and this is my show. From near to far, go in the field. Downtown, to out of town, to the park, to National Forest. From farmland to farm animals, I grew up here, so let's go. Down there in town. We're here at Diamond Valley Dentist with Dr. Jurgensen. So, Dr. Jurgensen, how did this get, business get started? This business started about two and a half years ago. I had been working in Kansas, and I found out that Dr. Wayman had passed away. And I had, I had some of their family members call and ask if I'd like to take over the practice. And so that's where it started. I remember Dr. Wayman. He was awesome. He really was. He was a really, really nice gentleman. I know. I heard that. And oh, I, I, I knew him, actually. <laughs> I knew Dr. Wayman since I was seven. Where did you go to dental school? I went to a school called Midwestern University in Phoenix, Arizona. In order to be a dentist, though, I had to go to another school before that and get a bachelor's degree in college, and that was a four-year degree. And then dental school was four years again. And then after that, I went to another year of what's called a residency, which is higher-level training. And then after that, I still go to a lot of classes to make sure I'm doing the most, the most advanced dentistry available. Cool. Why did you want to be a dentist? I wanted to be a dentist for all the wrong reasons. My dad's an orthodontist, and so he straightens teeth. <laughs> I saw he made a lot of money, and so I thought it'd be cool to make a lot of money. And I figured out that's not a good reason to go to dental school. Because I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what changed your mind? What changed my mind was I learned that there are a lot of things about dentistry that are really fun that I didn't know about before. I started to do fillings, I started to do crowns and root canals, and I even started to do fun things like implants, where I take people's teeth out and then put new teeth in. Wow! How many fillings a day do you do? It really depends. The most I've done in a day is probably about 30, mm -hmm. and some days I don't do any. Some days I don't do any, though. Some days I do other things. All right. What are teeth made from? Well, that's a really good question. A lot of people wonder what a lot of things are made of. But just like you're made up of skin and bone mm -hmm. and muscle, your teeth are made up of smaller parts too. So here are some teeth. We've got three main parts of teeth. The outer part, the white part that we see, it's made of what's called enamel. Then you get inside the tooth, and it's more yellow. That's called dentin. And then inside that, even deeper, is the nerve. We call that the pulp. Oh. How many cleanings do you do a day? Zero. I never do cleanings, except it's a really bad day if I do a cleaning. Oh. Uh, <laughs> why? Well, because that's not what dentists do. That's what hygienists do. They're specially trained just so they can do cleanings, and that's what you're going to talk to Sonia about. Oh. I have a cavity today, and we're going to talk to Dr. Jurgensen about it. The tooth that we're doing today is down here on the bottom, and it looks kind of like this. It's on the side of the tooth. We call it a flossing cavity, where you get it on the side of the tooth, right there. Ah! And so I drew it right here under the tooth, 
to show you where the cavity is, what we're going to do is I'm going to take my drill, I'm going to cut away a little part, and then we're going to put a side on it, just a little piece of plastic, and then we're going to fill it up with a filling so that it stays all sealed up and protected. All right. She's big enough. So this tooth is a molar, but it's actually on a premolar. So, who are your patients? My patients are anybody who has teeth or wants to have teeth. Ah, all right. While we filmed the segment, I held two different cameras. I would turn to capture the drilling and filling on the GoPro and our tiny cube cam. The drilling wasn't too bad, and the camera kind of took my mind off it. All right, so hi, we're here in the chair. Mm -hmm. Sarah's tooth is, you saw it on the x-ray, it's a smaller cavity. And Yay, so we're gonna go, that yeah. is smaller. It's going to be a pretty easy one to get done. We're going to get her numb. We're going to use a topical anesthetic. This is going to get her gums numb so <gasps> she doesn't feel the prick. Open big for me. Okay. Over real big. Ah. Gonna put this blue gel in here. That's gonna help. Uh huh. That just gets the gums numb. We call it a topical anesthetic. Uh huh. Now the way that I learned how to get people numb at first meant we had to take it and get her numb all the way back here, and it gets the entire jaw numb. But I've learned. There are better ways to do it. Uh huh. That only gets that <laughs> one tooth numb instead of getting the entire mouth numb. Mm hmm. And so that makes it real easy for a lot of people. You don't have your tongue that gets that gets frozen. Mm hmm. Open for me. So what I do is I come in sideways onto the tooth. I just put a little bit in at a time uh -huh. and I'm going to find where the tooth is and right beside it. Open real big. You can see that tooth that we're going to work on. Uh -huh. It's going to be this tooth right here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, we're going to use this other really cool device. It's called a dry shield. Mm -hmm. And this dry shield, sir, it's going to keep your mouth open and keep your tongue out of the way, but you can't talk to me when we're using it. Okay, go. Okay, open really, really big. Say, ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Bigger. What we're going to do is put a wedge in here, and it's going to separate, it's going to push the tooth away. It pushes the tooth away from the next one so I don't hit it. And then we drill. This is a computer computer controlled hand piece. There's that cavity. Let's look really close so you can see what a cavity looks like. Can you see the tooth? Uh, I see the teeth. I'm not sure if they're the... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I can see you can when see. You put the little, uh, the little piece of rubber in between. Yep, and you can see how it's a little bit wider on the tooth. Grab our camera. Quick picture. So now what we do is we take a little, little metal band, mm -hmm. little metal band that's curved, and it's going to go on the side of the tooth. Mm -hmm. That's going to make the side of the filling.
and this puts pressure on it so it's in the right spot. And now we're going to put our bonding materials in. And this is called bonding agent. It's kind of like cement. Mm -hmm. We make it really, really thin and then we use a blue light that's gonna make it change. It's called curing it. And this is the filling material. So the filling's done, now I just need to polish it so that it's smooth. We gotta keep that in for about one more minute, okay, Sarah? Mm -hmm. And now there's a different part mm -hmm. that we wanna get smoothed up, so I changed the tip again. I've got a lot of different tips. And this also shoots water to keep everything clean. And we're gonna check her bite to make sure that the tooth is in the right spot. Okay. Open. I want you to close your teeth down on the back. Go tap, tap, tap with your teeth. Tap, 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 tap. Open, open, open your mouth. Perfect. And the blue marks aren't on the filling, so it's done just perfect. Okay! And now you're all done. All right. That's my filling. Bye. See you at episode 33. Thank you and goodbye. See ya. For this Sarah's cam, we are going to bake some tooth cookies for the nice people at the dentist's office. Here's the missing bowl and we're going to add the sugar first. Next, we're going to add the softened butter. Now for the delicious cream cheese. And then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. Now for a half teaspoon of almond extract. Next we're adding vanilla. Here's the vanilla. We're going to add an egg yolk to make it creamy.
Now let's add the flour. Now this has to go in the fridge. And now the fun part, cutting out our tooth cookie. How do I do this? Slide it under. Hey, I'm better than I think I am at it. Beautiful, now let's get these in the oven. See you in seven to 10 minutes. Sugar time. All done and delicious. Sonia had been cleaning my teeth for more than two decades. That's right. You were a little girl. How many times a year should you see your hygienist? Well, it's different for different people. Most people is twice a year, every six months. Oh! Mm -hmm. But there are people that have to come a little more often. If they have deeper pockets, like the probe that I was showing you goes down deeper, um, they... The bacteria get in those pockets and cause gum disease, so they have to Is come a little a bit. Is it a disorder? It's um, it's a disease actually. It's but it can be, it can be corrected. Oh. What tool do you use? Okay, so these are called instruments. These are the instruments I use. This is a probe. I can see how deep the pockets are. Whether you've got gum disease or swollen gums, th this you measure down to the bone and you can tell how much bone you have around your teeth. And bone is what holds your teeth in, actually. So bone is very important. Um, this is an instrument that gets the back side of your back teeth, your molars. This one kind of picks out the tartar from down below on your front mm -hmm. teeth. Uh, this does a lot of things. This, <laughs> this is called a sickle scaler. It looks like a sickle. That cleans uh, tartar that's on top of your teeth, not under your gums. This one goes under your gums and cleans like the front side of your teeth. This is the one I use the most. This is a universal scaler, and this cleans everywhere. It's my favorite one. So, <laughs> love these. And then this is another sickle scaler on one end, and it cleans uh, tartar in between teeth on the other end. Wow! How many years does it take to become a dentist, Hygiena? Um, it took me about four years. Oh! Mm-hmm. For school for about four years. I went, you go two years, uh, you do all your science classes, your basic science classes like biology and microbiology, chemistry, all those. And then the second two years, um, you do all your dental classes. Cool! Yeah. And then I earned, oh, and then I earned a bachelor's degree in dental hygiene. What's the best way to take care of your teeth, Sonia? Between cleanings, you want to brush at least twice a day. Brush really good, and you want to spend about two minutes at a time brushing. 
You want to angle your toothbrush into your gums and really do a good job. Spend enough time because some people brush so fast, they do terrible <laughs> job. <laughs> so um, that, and then you want to floss your teeth. Yeah. Not eating a lot of sugar, not drinking soda. Soda's a, soda is wipes out your teeth. Bad yeah. Stuff. <laughs> what goodie do you give out to the patient? What goodie do it will I give out? Oh, well, right now it's Valentine's month, so we're giving out um, toothbrush and floss and toothpaste. So that's the goodies. <laughs> Thank you. A toothbrush, toothpaste, and a flossing kit. Yes. What's the giant teeth for? Oh, well, I like to show people how to brush with the giant teeth. What kind of people? Baby? Uh, kids mostly. Not babies, but kids. And adults, too. Because they want to know. Because a lot of people get tartar back here. Mm -hmm. And see when you brush like that? Look, it doesn't get the tartar. So you have to roll up like this. And that gets the tartar out. See that? Because otherwise it makes like a bridge and you can't get in there. So, oh. so we use it, yeah, we use it to show people how to brush their teeth. How do they practice dental hygienists in college with stuff like that? We would this? practice on here. We would paint nail polish on here and then we'd let it dry and we would use our instruments to scale it off so that we could know how to angle them. Wow! That was really cool. Super cool. Cool! She has a nightmare when her teeth fall out.